Live Radio Scotland. This lunchtime's news and sport for the borders with Angela Suave. A sex attacker who raped two women and indecently assaulted a third has been jailed for five years. Anthony Plaskett struck twice in Hoyk on the same day in April 2021, sexually attacking one victim, then raping another elsewhere. The High Court in Edinburgh heard he was on bail at the time and that he'd molested and raped another woman in Bay Bowness in West Lothian a year earlier. 38-year-old Plaskett had denied a series of charges at an earlier trial was but found but was found guilty of two rapes and one sex assault. Judge John Morris told Plaskett only a prison sentence was appropriate and that he would be on the sex offenders register indefinitely. Scottish Borders Council has managed to save enough money to plug next year's or to help plug next year's funding gap. Forecast spending was more than four percent higher than their expected income and funding, but the Accounts Commission found their savings target was exceeded by almost half as much again with more than two-thirds of the cutbacks recurring, thus available for future years. But there are warnings councils now have too little flexibility in how they spend their money, as SBC Chief Executive David Robertson told a committee of MSPs at Holyrood yesterday. The vast majority of, of local authority expenditure goes in two areas, um, education and social work. And, and the very biggest cost in terms of the education budget is teacher pay. And every year councils are told you can't reduce the amount of money that's been put into your integration joint board and in fact you're expected normally to increase that. Around one in every six people who went to Borders General Hospital's emergency department in the first week of this year had to wait more than 12 hours. Luke Jarman has the details. Following improvements being recorded throughout December, waiting times at the region's emergency department worsened significantly following the turn of the year. Despite repeated appeals for people to stay away from A&E at Borders General Hospital, the department dealt with 608 patients during the first seven days of 20. 2024, and only 58% of them were either admitted, discharged or transferred within the target to four hours, with more than 200 waiting beyond eight hours, and 96 patients were still there after 12 hours. The number of borderers out of work and claiming benefits in December was down on the same month the previous year. 1,925 people were signing on, five fewer than in November, but 85 down on December 2022. For the fifth month running, the figures are below 2,000, and in percentage terms it's also very slightly under the Scottish average. A retired policeman in Kelso is putting his experience at the sharp end of Scottish crime to use in the world of fiction after publishing his first novel, Retribution. Simon Davy walked across various areas of policing in a 30-year career, mostly spent in Scotland, including fraud, terrorism and murder cases. While he admits he's drawn on some experience, his debut novel is, he says, a work of fiction. I think of it more as an action thriller um, rather than pure crime, and I, I really didn't want to write about another DCI who goes around kicking in doors because DCIs don't do that, they're managers and sit behind the desk and obviously direct how investigations go but you know, they, they're not boots on the ground people as they're portrayed in books and in, in the TV and things so I, 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 no, I definitely didn't want to write another police procedural, I wanted to write something a bit different in rugby, only two borderers are included in Scotland's Six Nations squad. The white winger Darcy Graham's one of the 39 named by Gregor Townsend, as is Jed Barrett's second row player, Glenn Young. Scotland's first match of this year's Six Nations is against Wales in Cardiff on February the 3rd. In racing, white trainers Ewan Willens and Ian Jordan both had winners on the all-weather at Newcastle yesterday. Willens posted a 22-1 victory with Desert Quest in the Apprentice Handicap. Jordan had a 14-1 win in the Classified Stakes with Minton. To that. And Staffordshire runner Jack Scott has won this year's Montaigne Spine Race, billed as the UK's toughest. He crossed the Kirky Atom finish line at just before 9am this morning, clinching victory and a new course record. He covered the 268 miles from Derbyshire in 72 hours, 55 minutes and 5 seconds. Damien Hall is in second place, some way behind. He's still a few hours away from finishing. And Claire Banworth finishing, uh, representing France leads the women's race and is in fifth place overall. 
Uh, around 150 athletes set off from Derbyshire on Saturday, although freezing temperatures and blizzard conditions have forced many to retire. Four members of the borders of the Kelso-based border search and rescue team are competing in the shorter 160-mile Challenge North race. That was won by Irishman Joe O'Leary. Rob Hume was forced to retire through injury and illness, but Ian Stark, Damon Rodwell and Duncan Buchanan are set to finish at some point today. The borders weather, here's Gillian Smart. Hello, good afternoon to you. The very cold spell continues. This afternoon will be mainly dry, large amounts of wintry sunshine, but temperatures will remain around freezing. Tonight will remain largely dry with plenty of clear spells, but a few patches of low cloud may drift in from the north overnight and the odd isolated snow shower can't be ruled out. Cold with lows between minus 4 and minus 7 and a risk of ice. Tomorrow cold, breezy, but largely dry with a good deal of sunshine. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. More from the borders at half past four this afternoon. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. Now, as we've been hearing, the fallout from the government's Rwanda bill has dominated today's Prime Minister's questions. Labour says the rebellion and resignation show the Tories are in chaos over what they're calling their failing Rwanda gimmick. Well, that debate resumes shortly at Westminster with more votes on amendments later. The Financial Times political editor, George Parker, is with us now. So, uh, George, uh, a bit of a blow to the government yesterday, particularly with these resignations. Yeah, a very serious blow. And, you know, when you consider that migration is one of the issues that the public really care about, to have 60 of your own MPs standing up and essentially saying that the plan isn't going to work and voting against the government on the one of these amendments is a serious blow to the policy, but also a personal blow to the authority of the Prime Minister. Yes, and, and he is between a rock and a hard place in a sense, isn't he? Because he's got people disagreeing with him on both sides of his party. Exactly. I mean, it's got people on the left of the party who think the bill goes too far and sort of it infringes on international law. And then a sizable chunk of the ones who were rebelling yesterday who think it needs to be toughened up even more. Because in the end, they don't think it's effective and they don't think it will get, end up with people being put on planes to Rwanda before the election. Um, some people are wondering why on earth Mr. Sinat didn't quite drop the whole Rwanda plan, given the political problems it's presenting to him on an almost daily basis. Well, yes, and that the Prime Minister's questions, we heard uh, Sir Keir Starmer saying that even Rishi Sunak himself hadn't supported the plan, so why did he go ahead with it? Well, he was, yes, when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer, he was sceptical about whether this plan would actually act as a deterrent. And, of course, you know, it's not much of a deterrent when he's been put on planes to Rwanda in any event. And it was quite interesting, I thought, the Prime Minister's question time today that Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, was basically deploying mockery and humour, which he doesn't always do, actually, in the Commons to ridicule this policy. He said it's not a plan, it's a farce. He said that it's like hundreds of gold men scrapping over a broken comb. So he was basically sort of trying to make Sunak look ridiculous in pursuing this policy, which Keir Starmer regards as a, as a gimmick. What do you think will happen tonight when we have more amendments coming? Well, yes, we've got, we're about to start six hours of further debates on amendments, changes to the bill, and there are going to be further attempts by right-wing rebels to toughen the bill up, um, led by Robert Jenner at 